And as we continue to speak on, we, I'm the only one talking, uh, as, uh, as uh, we look together at what God's word says, about peace, the peace. I say, I say the peace of Christmas, and listen, it's a holiday that we tagged a name on it. It is, it is, it is celebrating because Christ came, because Christ came uh, to to us. Um, and I'm going to begin. And again, I, I, I put the scripture on there because I know we have all these different translations uh, up there. But but he, here's one of the scriptures I wanted us to look at, and it's one again that you think of at Christmas time. Um, and, and it is in Luke chapter chapter two, verses eight through fourteen. Um, it's you know those shepherds and and all the things going on. Um, but but let's let's look at this this passage here together. It says in the same region there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were fear, filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace on those with whom he is pleased. Let's pray. Jesus... We watch the news, we see all sorts of stuff going on. And peace is one of the last words we think about to describe. But as, as just illustrated to the children, you still bring peace to those who believe on you. You are the Prince of Peace. Help us as we look further in your word. What that means. Not an empty promise. Something that takes us every day into the next. We pray in your name. Amen. The angel said the coming of Christ brings glory to God and peace. Let me ask you a question. Would you describe the Christmas season as peaceful? You know, you go to Walmart. I hate to pick on Walmart, but we, we have one. And I just love going in there and just seeing more cars than ever before. More people than ever before. And the only decrease, the only, the only thing that has not increased is the number of cashiers. But anyway, um, <laughs> and it's just, you know, the, one of the last words I think with how our Christmases go and oh, how hectic it is. And, you know, no matter what, it seems like no matter what holiday, it's about how crazy the holiday, uh, holiday movie is. It's about how crazy the holidays are. Peace seems to be the last thing. But let's take it out of the Christmas season because these promises are not just for the 25th of December are our lives filled with peace. This, this peace of earth, is there peace in your family? Is there peace at work, in finances, in world events? Because when we are honest, we're going, I'm not seeing it. And so, in looking at this, this, this whole concept of the peace of Christmas, looking at this, this question, what is peace? What is peace? Here's one thing it's not, and I kind of described this with the children. It is not based on circumstances. You may be 
um, in peaceful circumstances, yet not be at peace. Uh, it reminds me of the time uh, right after World War II where in some of remote islands there were Japanese um, soldiers there who didn't get the word. They were still fighting a war that ended. Things can be going well your way, but yet you're still troubled. The opposite is true. You may be in unpeaceful circumstances and yet be at peace. This is, this is what Christ can bring. Uh, let me go to a very familiar psalm. Uh, psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd and all that. But, but let me just look at what is unpeaceful about the shepherd's psalm. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Does that sound like a walk in the park? Does that sound like, yippee, guess where we get to go today? Oh, really? Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this is, we, but he says this, even though you're going through an unpeaceful time, I will not fear. Is that me preaching after me preaching? <laughs> No, don't cut me off, but I mean, yes, please cut me off there. It's just, it's just I don't know. It disturbed, it disturbed everybody. Speaking of disturbing, peace brings, <laughs> anyway, that's a great illustration. We had planned that beforehand, but, but yet, all these things interrupt what we want is this conversation. But look at this, the shadow of death, yet I will fear no evil because you're with me. Your rod and a staff, they comfort me. I look over there and I see no matter what it is, no matter what's going to happen through this valley of the shadow, you're with me. And going to the next verse, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Now again, this is called the shepherd's psalm. One of the things that sheep can't do is if they detect any of their enemies in the area, the last thing they're going to do is eat, you know, yet. In an unpeaceful group, I can eat. You know what? My head with oil, my cup overflows. Somebody wrote this. I, I, I don't know, but it's a good, good little quote. Safety consists not in the absence of danger, but the presence of God. Jesus put it this way. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. Now, the thing is, you know, it's like, yeah, but, you know, Jesus, you know, he, he's always at peace. But listen, this is the night before he was going to be crucified. He knew that this very night, one of his own would betray him, another would deny him, and the rest would scatter. And yet he offered my peace. It's not based on circumstance. It's not based on everything going your way. It's based on who Christ is and what he can give us. I'm going to give a couple words because you know, some of you are going, oh, you have to fill out a blank. Here we go. The Hebrew word. What is peace? Here's the Hebrew word, shalom. You've heard shalom as a greeting, you know, uh, uh, a Jewish greeting. But, but here's what it meant. It meant wholeness. I want you to have wholeness or completeness. And it did more than just, you know, relationships and stuff like that, though it included it. But it, it was all aspects of life. And so physically, if someone says, I want you to have physical shalom, it would be health. Uh, mentally, it would have a, a sound mind. Vocationally, satisfaction of a job, well done. Relational, that there's harmony that is there. Emotionally, there's security, there's feeling safe, there is happiness. So when someone said, I wish you shalom, this is what they're saying in all of aspects, I want you to have peace. Now, to help us understand sometimes is what's the opposite? Uh, financially, uh, a debt paid in full. Um, the opposite of shalom. 
It's being broken. A life falling apart. Hectic. Dissatisfied. Discontent. Fearful. Anxious. It's very interesting. We're going to look at this in, a little bit later in the message. And we, we read this earlier. The angels had to always say these two words. Fear not. <laughs> Fear not. And they give a reason why. We're going to look at that in just a little bit. But, but here it is. God wants us to have shalom. But, but also in, in, the, in the New Testament, it's written in Greek. And here's, here's the Greek word, irene. Um, uh, and that simply means to unite. What is apart has been brought together. It, it, it talks about being united man with man, our personal relationships, and uniting God with man as well. Putting these two words together, peace is a calm assurance that comes from finding your fulfillment in Christ and being united with both man and God. I will be so bold to say you cannot, to, you cannot experience true peace without the Prince of Peace, without Christ. You might have a peaceful moment, a peaceful attitude occasionally here and there, but how do we obtain peace? How do we obtain peace? Peace is bringing Jesus into the situation. It, it, it says when, when he is in his right place. Well, what's his right place? Well, it says glory to God in the highest and on earth peace. When he receives the glory. And glory is another word we just throw out there. It, it can mean weight or it can mean shining and all that. So when he has the spotlight on him or the term weight is that picture of the scales of here is Jesus in my life and here's other things in my life and, and Jesus is getting the glory. Okay, so those pictures are there. And so when he's receiving the glory, we receive the peace. Because when other things outweigh or outshine Jesus in our life, there is no peace. There is no peace. I told the children I was going to show you a picture, and, and, and I don't know how well you can see, but, but there's a lot of busyness in this picture. Now, no, no answering over there. You got a preview of this before the service. But in this picture, I want you to just kind of look and, and you see, you know, there's people bringing burdens over there. There's a crowd of people doing something over here. There's people playing on the ice over there and kids and all sorts of activity. What's the most important thing happening in this picture? I know you're going, I can't see it. It's too small. It's too blurry. It's whatever. It's right here. A little close up. This is, um, and I don't know how to pronounce uh, uh, Norwegian names, Bruegel's painting, The Census of Bethlehem. And now he wrote it, he wrote it, he, he, he drew this, this picture um, in his setting, in his time. Because there was no snow in, in Bethlehem and all that other stuff. And, uh, but, but he's like, if it happened here, what would it look like? And in all the busyness that's going on and everything, you can so miss. And, and, and again, a clearer picture I wish you, you could. But, you know, here's a guy and he even has a saw on his shoulder. So we know, hey, that's Joseph and, and Mary. It is so easy to miss. Because everything else shouts at us. But when Jesus is the one who's getting the glory, that he's the heavy in your life, that the light is shining on him, then we experience peace. What kind of peace does Jesus bring? 
In Isaiah 9, 6 and 7, you'll, you'll recognize these. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. There it is, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on, his, on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. What type is, this, is, is he going to be bringing? Listen, listen. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. That as he rules, peace is there and so earlier I, I had this, how does one obtain peace? Peace is bringing Jesus in the situation. But better said, peace is bringing Jesus into the situation to rule. To be the Lord. So what kind of peace are we talking about? Peace with God. Peace with God. Peace with God is dependent on saving faith. It says in the book of Romans, therefore, since we've been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That, that we've been justified, that, that we were not right with God but God made us right through Christ and what he's done by our receiving it through faith. And when we have received Christ through faith, we have peace with God. We have a relationship that forever remains peace with God. It is no other way found but through Christ alone. And so, you know, looking at what type of peace, well, again, peace is when we let Christ come into the situation to rule. And so we need to invite Jesus to rule our soul. The soul just means all of our life, all of our being. Jesus, I trust in you and you alone. We can have peace with God. And listen, all the other pieces I'm going to talk about, if this piece isn't there, the others aren't there either. We can have the peace of God. The peace of God. This is dependent on circumstantial faith. Now, let me just define that. and probably not the best word, but it just means whatever the circumstances is, I believe. My faith isn't on those circumstances and the outcomes. My faith is in Christ alone. In Philippians 4, it says, don't be anxious about anything. I don't know how many times I've read that and I just see people going, yeah, right. Okay, yeah, no, that's what he told us to do. Don't be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And those are like a bunch of words that just mean prayer, okay? If, 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 don't be anxious about anything. Pray about everything. Giving it over. Whatever the circumstance is, I am putting my faith on you. I am bringing this to you. And look what happens. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. That when you bring whatever it is that you want, to, you might be anxious or might be fearful or, or I don't know what, or it's just everything's going crazy, truly bringing it to him, the peace of God. I trust you. We are, we are looking at inviting Jesus again to rule, to rule our responses. God, let my response be that no matter what comes to me in this life, I come to you. When we pray, remember these three things. The love of God that wants the best for us. God loves you. He wants the best. Now, listen, listen. It might be not how you define the best because the best that God has is, I want you to be conformed to the image of my son. And sometimes that means going through some things. But when we pray, remember the love of God that wants the best for us, the wisdom of God that knows what's best for us, 
and the power of God that can accomplish it. And I know some of you are going, yeah, but you know, when I pray, it doesn't seem like anything's happening and all that. Oh, well, listen, listen. <laughs> here's something that, that I like with Bill Hybels. I don't like all the things he said, but here's something I like. He put in his book, Too Busy Not to Pray. Um, and it says this, if the request is wrong, God says no. Don't you want a God who just doesn't beckon to your call? You know, so it's like, hey, I want this. It's like, it's not going to be good for you, but here, you know, no. God knows what's best for us. If the request is wrong, God says no. If the timing is wrong, God says slow. If you're wrong, <laughs> meaning you're not ready for it, God says grow. But if the request is right, the timing's right, and you're right, God says, go. Victor Hugo, you know him as the, the author of Les Mis, um, said this, have courage for the great sorrows of life and patience for the small ones. And when you have finished your daily task, go to sleep in peace. God is awake. And Jesus, forget Victor Hugo and all these, but Jesus say, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart. I've overcome the world. Peace that Jesus gives is not the absence of trouble, but it is rather the confidence that he is there with you always. So we have the peace with God. We have the peace of God, but also we have peace with man. Peace with man. This is a dependent on obedient faith. Well, what are you talking about obedient faith? Okay, God, whether I like to, or I want to or not, what you say about something, I'm going to do because I believe you're right. Whether I feel you're right or not, I will act in faith by being obedient. This is dependent on obedient faith. Inviting Jesus to rule your relationships specifically. Now there's a lot of other things that we uh, dependent uh, on obedient faith is, but when you're looking at re your relationships, listen, listen, when somebody does something bad to you, what naturally do you want to do? Do something worse to them. You know, it's that old Bucks Bunny thing with Yosemite Sam, you know, and they start with a little knife and then a big sword and then a little gun and then a big gun and then a tank. I mean, it just escalates. You know, what, what does it look like? Um, how can we have peace with man? By being obedient to God when he talks about relationships. Romans 12. I, I just want to read through this and look how difficult it is. Look how countercultural a lot of this is. But it's saying, God, whether I want to or not, I will obey. And even this passage says, be at peace with all men as, as, as far as it depends on you. Well, what does that look like? Bless those who persecute you. Yeah, I want to bless them, you know. <laughs> uh, uh, bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. I don't want to, but yeah, I'm going to do it. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Some are better about doing that. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud. But be willing to associate with people of low position. Don't always look, hey, let me always be around my friends and all that. No, I'm going to be around other people too. Don't be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. Yeah, but, but I, don't, I don't have to do it. I can do it. I have freedom. No, no, no. That's not what it says. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, Live at peace with everyone. It's not always possible, but as much as it depends on you. Do not take revenge, my friends. Leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy's hungry, eat him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. I love that passage because at, at the last part, you're going, yeah, that's what I want. I want him to have burning coals on their head. You know, you know okay, we're not going to go into all the details there, but he's just saying, listen, listen, you do your part in obeying me. And here's a li one list after other of here's things to obey. Do not 
be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. That's just one sample of, here's a bunch of, you want to have peace in your relationships? Do these things. But I don't want to do these. Then you're not going to have peace in your relationships. Are we going to obey the word or not? The reasons for faith, for peace. Here's, here's just a few Christmas story things where there's fear and the announcement, but here's peace. The reason for peace, and we talked a lot about prayers. God hears our prayers. Zechariah, his wife, never having children and all that. He goes to the temple and it says, an angel of the Lord appeared to him standing in the right side of the altar of incense. When Zachariah saw him, he was startled and gripped with fear. Again, if you're in a room by yourself and you think you're the only one in the room by yourself and something just suddenly appears, that's going to get you shooken up and that's all it's saying. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zachariah. And then he gives the why. Your prayer has been heard. God knows your situation. God hears your prayer. And he goes, your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son and you were to give him the name John. He goes on and on and on. But just, just, God knows. God knows that circumstance. God knows that relationship. But he hears our prayers. Here's another reason. God gives his favor. God gives us his favor. Mary's in a room by herself or somewhere outside by herself. I'm not sure where she is, but Mary was greatly troubled at his word. Suddenly this, 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 uh, this angel shows up, Gabriel, and goes, hey, oh, five, uh, hail Mary, your favored one. M Mary was greatly troubled at, at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this was. But the angel says, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. How does one get favor with God? Only by God's grace. It's never deserved. Not even with Mary. God came to her situation and he gave her his favor. Even, even the shepherds in, in, in the passage we read earlier, one of the translations says that we can have peace on whom his favor rests. God wants us to know his grace. Another reason for peace, and, and we're going to end with this, God gives us great news. Going back to the passage we looked at, there were shepherds in the fields nearby keeping watch over their flocks at night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them. The glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly terrified. And, 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 and here's those words the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. And then he gives them the why. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. If you need a reason for peace, you look to the manger that God would send his own son, but he would move his son to be put on the cross. That is how he is the Savior. For he took my punishment and your punishment. And unless Christ has taken your punishment, you're lost without him. Believe on him so you can have eternal life. This is the good news. That even though we were enemies... He came in grace. 2 Corinthians 
talks about being reconciled. Reconciled, what does reconciled mean? It means being made at peace. And it says this, all of this is from God who reconciled, who made peace with us to himself through Christ. But watch this, and gave us the ministry of making peace. That God was reconciling, making peace with the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of being at peace with God. Listen, if you are here today and you do not know Christ as your Savior, The message for you is God sent his son so you could be at peace. That whether, no matter how good you think you are, the word of God says that you're a sinner and you are at enmity with God. But he sent his son so there can be peace for all who believe. But now I talk to those who are believers who have received the ministry of reconciliation. What is our job? This is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Look at the last line. And he has committed to us the, the message of reconciliation. What's our job? To let other people know who don't know, you can have peace with God through Christ alone. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. As though God were making his appeal through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled to God. Let's pray. Jesus, my prayer is for any who are hearing my voice, whether in this room or online today or someday in the future, and they hear this, that they would ask themselves this question, do I have peace with God and God, I pray they won't have false answers of thinking that they're good enough or religious enough or have done, done all these different things, but, but because solely what Christ has done on their behalf and they put their faith on him and him alone. That that's what they would do. That God, my job and all the believers in this room are saying, be reconciled with God. And that, God, you would put on us, we who have received your peace. And, Father, as we've been looking at this peace, there are some times that we recognize that, hey, I'm not at peace. And that's simply because we have not had the faith to trust you to do our part. Help us to live lives that experience your peace. So others can look at us, as your word says, and, and they look for why do you have hope? Why do you have peace? Why do you... All the things you're going through. And we can simply say it is through Christ and Christ alone. Help us to be your ambassadors. Help us to join other ambassadors like our, our missionaries that are out there to support them as they are letting people know you can be reconciled. You can be at peace with God. Because you came. And you came to die for our sin. Help us to believe on you. For salvation. But also in all the unpeacefulness of this world. That we would experience your peace. I pray in your name. Amen. Amen. If you need to speak with me um, about your relationship with Christ, or maybe you are going through something that is so unpeaceful, and you just want someone to pray with you to help you along. We're not to do this alone. Um, I'd be glad to be, again, 
as, as normally I'll be down here at the end of the, uh, of the service.